Okay, um, good afternoon everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to my sessions. I will be talking about Kola OpenStack on ARM Ubuntu. Especially, I'm going to run my uh, demo on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS on ARC64 architecture. Okay, before we go into the main course, I will introduce myself first because it's not going to be fair if I talk to you and you guys not knowing who I am. A little bit about me, my name is Aji Arya. I am originally from Borneo Island, far away from uh, Surakarta. And currently I'm working in Jakarta. Besides that, I'm actively joining organizations like um, CHEF. I'm one of the CHEF ambassador for Indonesia region. If you are having interest in software defined storage, you can join the Telegram group. Here is the link, t.me slash chef ID. And I'm also active in Open Infra user group Indonesia, where we talk about OpenStack, uh, Kata Container, Uzu, and other Open Infra projects inside of that um, organization. Um, you can also join that group, um, t.me slash OpenStack Indo, it's a Telegram group. And also we have booth, you can visit the uh, Communitas booth, where you can ask anything about the Open Infra community. And also, if you are interested in reading some technical stuff, I, I, I wrote some blogs. You can visit blog.igr.id. And uh, that was my activity. And as a professional, I'm working as a cloud architect in two companies currently. Uh, the first one is Flexi. Flexi Integration Dikdaya is a system integrator company that mostly work with government in Indonesia. And the second one is um, the company that I founded with my colleague, it's Impact. That's a um, system integrator company as well, but um, the, the target market is enterprise and small, medium enterprise. Okay, uh, I will give you an image what will this topic will cover. The first one is what is OpenStack and what is ARM. I will explain it as an overview. And the second part, we will cover about the environmental concern. As a youth, we have to put more effort in our Earth because I think the Earth is a little bit dying. But that's going to be a pers personal perspective. And on the third one, uh, we are covering up how to deploy OpenStack on ARM Ubuntu. I will give um, a summary of steps that you can reproduce on your environment. And the last one is, I will share if you have an interest in deploying your applications on ARM servers, you can definitely try it on our environment. I will give the details later on. Okay, OpenStack overview. You might be uh, familiar with Google Cloud Platform, AWS, and other uh, cloud provider, but that is owned by a company. What if you want to deploy your own cloud? You, you want to your environment, your applications to be in your in your own data center, in your own servers. You might want to deploy it with VMware, um, KVM, but if you want to reproduce the same thing, you want to have cloud, you could go with OpenStack. OpenStack is an open source cloud uh, platform, so it will give you an ability to have the similar things like Google Cloud Platform, AWS, but it, everything is on your control. So you have everything in your control, in your own data centers, in your own servers. And 
why don't we use uh, VMware? VMware is okay, but some company doesn't have the budget to um, purchase the license. So we have alternative options we can use OpenStack for our infrastructure. Okay. Uh, the next thing is I want to talk about ARM. What is ARM? ARM is um, a British semiconductor and software design company. They are known for developing and licensing intellectual property around CPUs, GPUs, and other related technologies. So if you are using a um, smartphone, uh, your the system or the, the chips inside of your phone is probably designed by ARM. So this is where they purchase the design and they, um, they, they make it on the company. Like for example, Samsung. Samsung, they want to make chip. So they purchase the license from ARM and then they uh, produce their own chip and sell it to the market. Same for NVIDIA, Apple. Um, the chip's design is coming from ARM. And what we are going to cover in this talk is ARM from uh, Ampere Computing. Ampere Computing is a semi semiconductor company. They sell data center CPUs. So that's what we are going to cover. Okay, this environment, uh, environmental concern, um, this is not coming from environmental expert. I'm just a personal uh, person and engineer. I have no uh, no expertise in environmental, but I have uh, empathy. I care about what if um, Earth is not livable anymore. I want to I want to have my children, my grandchildren, to still have uh, livable Earth. Because we know uh, currently we have a climate, climate crisis, so we have to do something about it. Because if we don't do it, and then it's going to be late, and maybe we, we, we will not survive for the next 100 years. The latest news is Indonesia drought. This uh, Indonesia uh, drying uh, mostly on its part of Indonesia. Uh, it could lead to food shortage, uh, hard to obtain clean water, and other things coming from the Indo um, drought. And the, the, the other hot topics is Jakarta air pollution. It's recorded 14,000 acute respiratory infection cases per September. 2023 in Jakarta, so it is very unfortunate. Um, if you have a family in Jakarta, uh, maybe a little chi little children and elderly, they have uh, acute respiratory infections, or in Indonesia we call it ISPA. The air is un unbreathable. It's it's hard to obtain a clean clean air because in so many homes right now they probably have air purifier to help us get clean air. The next thing is unbearable heat. Even probably for the tourists now, uh, in coming to Indonesia is very hot right now. It's um, unbearable heat. Okay, next things. Uh, what's in my mind is Living a livable planet for our children and grandchildren. That's only my main concern. Because who else to blame if our earth is not livable? Of course we are we, we as the human. Okay. Uh, enough complaining. Then what can we do as a technical engineer probably? The first one is we can use renew renewable energy. But it, it is highly regulated, especially in here in Indonesia. Mostly our electricity comes from state-owned company, PLN. 
what options we have wind we have solar we have uh, geothermal hydro and biomass those are renewable energy that we could use for data center in in our tech world and the second one is the alternative because number one is very highly um, regulated by government we could use liquid or immersion cooling so this technology is uh, been around in Tokyo they created a small container and put um, inside of that there is a tank the tank in, inside the tank there is a surface and then the liquid so they are trying to 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 solve because it's in container they don't have a lot of electricity so the alternative of air cooling is uh, liquid or immersion cooling but now the, the I think the technology is expensive um, I heard one tank is around 10,000 USD maybe that's going to be on the future uh, let's see who will adapt that technology okay the third one this is uh, most of us can do but traditionally we use a uh, balance server we deploy one application in one server and nowadays we have a lot of cloud technology for example you can use OpenStack you can use Kubernetes but the, the thing is uh, use cloud technology to reduce our electricity consumption or better use virtualizations at least or if you want to go further you can use container okay this is a comparison between um, x86 and R. this is not apple to apple because they have different CPU instruction set and that's the point of course because we are trying to solve the power consumption issue so this is um, a research done by HPE and Ampere HPE is a server company and Ampere is a semiconductor company so they've done a research where they make 1.3 million requests per second the applications stack is using nginx redis memcache and mysql so if we are using arm server to serve 1.3 million requests we only require one server rack while using amd epic third generations we require two racks and the last one is Intel Xeon third generations. It requires three racks. So imagine if you have a concern in paying your power bill, you must be excited seeing this because you can reduce your power consumption while keeping the same performance for serving 1.3 million requests per second. So it's game changing for data center okay um, for notice I have um, arm server in collocated in data center and we've done some trial on that server we tried OpenStack we tried Chef we tried um, many operating systems in Debian family and Red Hat family so if you want to deploy OpenStack on ARM the first thing is you have to install the operating system first in this case I'm using Ubuntu 22.04 LTS the number one step is you could install it manually or you can use metal as a server metal as a server sorry this is a mistake oh, sorry this is correct metal as a surface so metal as a surface is a um, canonical project where you can automate the process of install installing operating system 
because install manually is probably going to cost you a lot of time. Imagine if you have 100 servers, you want to automate the installations of operating system. You might want to explore about Metal as a service. Okay, after you have the operating system, you will need to build the container image of Cola OpenStack. So Cola OpenStack is one of the distributions of OpenStack. Uh, usually we have uh, options using systemd service or container. In this case, Cola OpenStack, they are using container. In the second step, you will have to use tools called Cola Build. So these tools will help you to build the container image for a services like compute service, identity service, um, volume service, all of the container image required will be built by Cola Build. After you have the container, container image, you will have to deploy the OpenStack. It will have some steps like bootstrap, installing the Docker, and then pre-check, checking if your IP is available, checking if your image is available, and then you will you will deploy your call open stack using tools called Call Ansible. This is um, the project. So we have um, flexibility. If we don't want to use Call Ansible, we can um, build our own deploying tools. But we, uh, but the community made it easy by creating a tool called Collinsible. And after you have set set up your OpenStack, it's ready to use. You have to do one step. You have to download the Arc sixty four cloud image. For example, um, when you go to the do download site of an operating system, let's say Ubuntu, you have some options. AMD64, uh, PowerZ, Arc64. That's the one that we want to choose. Download it and upload it to the OpenStack lens. And after you set, and after you upload your image, you are ready to go. You are ready to launch your virtual machines, or as we call it, instance in OpenStack. So this uh, this is a summary, uh, step by step, how you can. Uh, deploy OpenStack on your ARM servers. What if you have a curiosity about how we do it on AMD64 or X, X86? We just uh, remove this number two steps because they already built it for us. It's on um, container image registry. Okay, here I have a recorded demo. I will show you. Oops, I think the, the projector cannot show the terminal. Okay, can we shoot? Bisa matiin lampu nggak? Matiin lampu coba, biar kelihatan. Oh, sama aja ternyata. Udah bisa melihat? Oke. Okay. <laughs> so this uh, servers that I that we have in uh, data centers. This is located in Bogor. So it's already installed with Ubuntu. Uh, if we show using LS CPU, we will see that this is the architecture is ARC64. This is the vendor ID. It's coming from ARM, and this is the model name, Neoverse N1. Okay, I, I forgot to mention in public cloud GCP, AWS, they also have um, ARM instance flavor. So you want to try ARM, you can do it in public cloud. But in this example, we will use it on our open site. So in this machine, I have 80 cores per socket. So in ARM, 
we don't have multi-threading. In example, in Intel, we have hyper-thread. In AMD, we have a multi-thread. So one core could be acknowledged as two logical core. In ARM, we don't have it. One core is one thread. Okay, this is the kernel version. It's on. It's running on 5.15. Uh, we also can see it running on Arc 64. Okay, this is the OpenStack Skyline dashboard. If um, previously it's served by OpenStack Horizons, but because the UI UX is a bit feel old, so there is a new project called uh, Skyline. This is based on a new web technology stack. This is how it will look like. This is the home dashboard. We have the quota overview. In this demo, I will show how to create OpenStack instance or OpenStack virtual machines. I'm choosing the operating system. I'm setting the root disk. And the next one is I'm configuring the network settings, choosing which network that will be used by the virtual machines. And this is a security group. So it's similar to firewall, but it's in OpenStack built-in features. You can block uh, HTTP port, HTTPS port, or allow it. So this is the system config giving name to the virtual machines and injecting key pair or SSH public key. And also I'm injecting user data here. So I have a password on my um, user account on, inside the virtual machines. Here is a little bit waiting for the virtual machines to boot up. This shows a build. After some time, it will show as active. In this demo, I will try to access it through console. It's using NoVNC. NoVNC. Here showing the boot up process. And we like we have our ARM virtual machines on ARM server. This is our CPU from the first run machines. That's the demo. Um, now, if you want to, if you if you have uh, applications and you want to try it on different CPU architecture, you can try it on on our environment. We already set up. We will give it. We will give you an access for free, of course. So you can try your favorite software on our um, open stack. You can register. Uh, tell us your purpose, what you want to do with our our open stack. And if you want to take a peek, here's we have two dashboard. The first one is Horizon, and the second one is Skyline. If you want to register, please just scan the QR code. Okay, maybe um, a little opinion. Uh, shall we move 
everything on ARM. I believe uh, for now, just do hybrid architecture. You still keep your X66 machines while purchasing new ARM and do your research first, uh, testing out if your performance is going well or not. And you, you, you still can use um, X86 besides ARM at the same time. You can use it uh, simultaneously. The same like uh, GCP AWS do, they still have x86 flavor, you can deploy it and also they also have the ARM flavor. Okay, here is the resources um, from for, for the slides, uh, maybe you can read it later because I will share this uh, presentation slides. Okay, thanks to our sponsors, Canonical Ubuntu, LibreOffice, OnlyOffice and other uh, sponsors and thank you to you guys you guys have been amazing for listening to sessions I think that's all for me thank you <laughs> we still have five minutes if you have questions please uh, ask uh, organizers pemilihan nengen oh langsung aja Oke. Eh, Pak biar biar direkam nanti orang ngerti, Pak. Kan Asia, Pak, acaranya, Pak. Oke. So the compatibility of software, uh, we can take a look at the Ampere computing websites. So they show what applications that are already tested on our server. I think most of the open source project right now building multiple architecture for IBM PowerZ, IMD64, ARM. I think they 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 build multi architecture right now. So it's going to be easy for us to move to new architecture. Uh, the other things, maybe if your software is a bit older, you you don't have to struggle to to migrate to ARM. Mostly it works like Nginx, Memcache, Redis, Apache, even OpenStack. It can run on ARM. Yes, um, we already showed the slides. Here, uh, of course, there is poor efficiency. In this case, HP done their research. Three times reduced data center footprint. Um, so you, you will have to spend more electricity when using AMD and Intel, and you will, you will reduce when you are using um, ARM server. I think not not only uh, electricity, also um, water involving. Is that uh, answer the question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe one more question before. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first sentence. What, what, what was it? Uh, so, it's good. Uh, it's not Apple to Apple uh, yeah. compared to HTC and uh, ARM. So since they have different fundamental like uh, ARM use, they use Windows and uh, HTC use complex instruction set. But 
there is ever technologies like uh, X5 uh, that Which can really like? have same fundamental that just reduce the concerns that like um, what you have about other things. Okay, my thoughts about um, yeah, it is not apple to apple because um, x86 is a bit older rather than um, rix 5 or ARM if we talk about it. Uh, my thought is, I believe uh, people want to use less power, uh, less resources, but can serve as many as what x86 do. So I think ARM is the future. Uh, just, just take a look what we have now in uh, our GPU. They are using ARM architecture in our phone. They are using in using ARM architecture, and even in uh, let us uh, MacBook, Apple laptop, they are using ARM as well. Uh, that's because the power efficiency, and uh, we try to save Earth. That's my thought. That's probably uh, that's part of my Thank you for asking. I think we over one minute. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.